years it needed to get published. This is part of Adam Schreck's uh, postdoc work that he did at the ARS station in Bushland. We were looking at the effects of protein supplementation of steers uh, consuming low quality forages and its effects on greenhouse gas emissions. And we're particularly interested in this because um, despite a lot of press about the United States beef production system and the use of cereal grains in confinement towards slaughter, if you look at an at a entire life cycle analysis of, of beef production in the United States, approximately 82% of feed that's consumed to produce one kilogram of beef are forages. And so the forage component is, is a substantial contributor to our production of beef in the United States. And uh, due to our production cycles, and our, in particular with our cow-calf sector, there are periods of time during the year that they're going to be grazing low-quality stockpiled forages. And we wanted to know a little bit more about how common production practices might impact their, um, their greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, let's see. I think my slides got out of order. Sorry about that, y'all. Let me look at something right quick. Uh, oh, no, no, I didn't. Sorry. Running a little behind. Okay, so this is just to give you an example here. Uh, some work that was done by Bawadi and Wittenberg in 2002, they compared um, beef cattle that were consuming two different diet quality types. Now these would have been both based on forages, but had significantly differing in vitro organic matter digestibility. And you'll see here that um, in terms of methane production, um, when you look at it on a gross basis or just liters per day, the methane production is greater from the high quality diet Yet, when you look at methane expressed either as liters per kilogram of dry matter intake, or when you look at the YM, which is methane expressed as a percent of gross energy intake, the uh, methane, the YM, is actually greater with the lower quality diets. And so we know that these low quality, for consuming these low quality stockpile forages can be a, a contributor to, to methane emissions. Now, part of our production practices in the United States to overcome these low-quality forages are to supplement uh, crude protein. And in particular, when we're talking about native warm season grasses, so that's what NWSG stands for. This is work that Bob Cochran's lab did back in Kansas State to, in the 90s, and this work has been done at multiple other labs uh, as well, um, that demonstrated that as the uh, forages mature and senesce, crude protein concentration often drops precipitously. Now, as the crude protein concentration drops precipitously, so does forage intake, because gut fill um, essentially slows, uh, or the slow rate of fermentation slows, uh, increases gut fill, slows rate of passage, and decreases intake. And so we, for years, have, come, have supplemented uh, low-quality forages with crude protein to overcome these deficiencies. Now, we also have a diversity of low qual or supplements that we would use for low quality forages in uh, these, these types of diets. And I, I've just got two here. The, these are two that we actually used for this experiment. On your left, you've got cottonseed meal. On the right, you've got dried distiller's grains. And the reason I highlight these two and the reason that we used them in this experiment was that while relatively similar in, in crude protein concentration, there's a, there's a difference in, in ether extract and where the dried distiller's grains has a greater concentration of ether extract than, than the cottonseed meal. And so, you know, the, with the advent of the ethanol industry in the United States, dried distiller's grains has become a very common and very popular uh, crude protein supplement for these low quality forages which also has the benefit of, of providing the additional ether extract as we know that fat is toxic to methanogens. Fat uh, can also potentially uh, reduce methane emissions from cattle that are grazing uh, or consuming these, these supplements in addition to low quality forages. That's a, that's a significant component of our experimental design for today's data that I'm gonna show you. 
So we were interested in identifying the effects of cottonseed meal and, or dried distillers grains on greenhouse gas emissions and energy losses from beef cattle that were fed low quality forages. Uh, we utilized a three period crossover design with 23 crossbred steers that were randomly assigned to treatments within each period. Um, they, each period was 28 days, 23 days of adaptation, five days of, of fecal collection. And we used this final seven days of period data for CO2 and CH4 flux measurement to match up with our fecal collections. These cattle had been trained to uh, green feed and to Kaling gate systems for approximately 28 days prior to uh, the beginning of this experiment. They were individually fed their supplements and the forage in a Kalen gate system. And they were actually fed one of three supplements. Now the control cattle were also fed a supplement and I'll show you on the next slide the design of that supplement in so much as it was not intended to actually provide nutrients but instead to be a carrier for the marker which we use, we utilized titanium dioxide in this experiment. Um, cottonseed meal was offered to these cattle at 0.29% of body weight. And then the dried distiller's grains treatment, we added urea to, I think it was 3.4% of the total supplement. We added urea to the, the uh, dried distiller's grains to essentially match or balance the rumen degradable protein between the two treatments. And the supplements were fed daily at 8 a.m. after feed refusals from the pre previous day had been uh, removed. So this is, the, this is the formulation of the, of the three supplements. Uh, again, that control supplement was based on cottonseed hulls uh, with some molasses and salt added essentially to, to enhance palatability to get the cattle to eat the control supplement. Uh, the majority of it was cottonseed hulls and limestone. And then again, we had uh, titanium dioxide and our goal with dosing was to get 10 uh, grams of titanium dioxide per head per day. The cottonseed meal was predominantly, um, treatment was predominantly cottonseed meal with uh, salt and limestone added in addition and then the, the titanium dioxide. Same story with the uh, dry distiller's grains except that we added the urea to, uh, to balance our EP. Steers were allowed continuous access to the green feed system within each period. They were programmed to provide access every four hours. And during our collection periods, the um, measurements from the green feed, the, the usages, the successful usages of the green feed average 2.4 um, times per day. Calibrated the green feed weekly with known standards of uh, methane, CO2, and nitrogen. And our emission data was filtered to remove sample events of less than three minutes. So anytime that the animal did not have their head in the, in the unit for three minutes, or when we had mass airflow levels that were less than 26 liters per second. Um, so we added titanium dioxide, and this is actually goes straight to, to Dr. Gunther's comments and some of the work that they're doing. We used titanium dioxide as a marker, but in our control steers, we had poor consumption of the supplement. Um, our cottonseed hull, molasses, and, and salt was apparently not appetizing enough to encourage use. And so we used acid, uh, we used AIA instead as our internal marker once we had the failure of the, of the TiO2. So um, we have some data for you, Dr. Gunther, if you all want to work on your model. <laughs> going forward. We collected fecal grab samples daily during the last five days of each period and we uh, analyzed our, our uh, dependent variables, uh, digestibility, energy loss, and CO2 and CH4 flux using proc mix. Uh, steer was a random effect, period and treatment were fixed effects and we utilized the PDIF option uh, within proc mix to perform mean separation. Now, one of the hallmarks of low quality forage work with native warm season grasses is that you'll see an intake or an increase in um, forage uh, intake when uh, low quality forage supplements are provided. And you'll note here that uh, total organic matter intake was greater with the cottonseed meal and DEGS treatments relative to the control and I believe that there was no difference between the cottonseed meal and the dried distillage grains. 
Along with that, fecal excretion increased with the cottonseed meal and the dried distillers grains uh, relative to the control. There was no um, difference in the apparent digestibility of organic matter when expressed as a percentage of intake, which is a, um, a debatable topic within this, this area because oftentimes what we see is we see an increase in total organic matter digestible intake, but the increase in the digestibility of the forage itself is often uh, quite variable from study to study. Um, in terms of neutral detergent fiber, uh, same basic story. We had a total increase in NDF intake when we provided the cottonseed meal and the dry distiller's grain treatment relative to the control. Fecal excretion increased. Um, and then there were differences in the apparent digestibility as a percent of intake uh, where we saw that the, the apparent digestibility was actually greater with the control relative to the cottonseed meal and the dry distiller's grains. In terms of crude protein, the uh, calculated dietary crude protein, so this, this would have been based on the, the uh, feeding rates and the uh, crude protein in the supplements, in the pellets that were offered in the green feed, in the, the hay itself. You'll note that we were below that 7% threshold with the control that we showed in the Cochrane review in the introduction, but we were well above it with the cottonseed meal and the dry distiller's grain treatment. Now, supplement intake differed by treatment, but that was partially by design. Um, hay crude protein intake was less for the control than it was for the cottonseed meal or the dried distiller's grains. Um, green feed pellet intake was, was greater for the, uh, crude protein intake was greater for the control relative to the cottonseed meal or the dried distiller's grains, but as a whole, that uh, difference of approximately you know, eight grams was a, was a small proportion of the total crude protein intake, which you can see was greater with the cottonseed meal and the dried distiller's grains relative to the control. Now for the, the energetics for what we, what we came here to visit about. Um, in terms of gross energy intake, uh, gross energy intake from forage supplement was, and supplement was greater for the cottonseed meal and the uh, dried distiller's grains relative to the control for both forage and supplement. Um, and, and overall, total gross energy intake was also greater for the treatments relative to the control. Now, uh, fecal energy was also greater for the treatments relative to the control, um, as, as well as digestible energy intake. Now, DE as a percent of GE was not, nor was DE when expressed as a uh, megacals per kilogram of dry matter intake were not different relative or among the three treatments. However, when you look at the, the uh, gas fluxes, uh, metabolic CO2 is greater for the cottonseed mill and dry distillers grains relative to control. Um, the methane emissions, so cottonseed meal was greater than control and dry distillers grains. Dry distillers grains was greater than control. When you express that um, as, as energy and megacalories per day, you see the same relationship. However, when you look at the YM, when you express methane energy as a percent of gross energy intake, you'll note that the control was the greatest, dry distiller's grains was the least, and cottonseed meal was intermediate, which we attribute to the um, increased ether extract or the increased fat content of the dry distiller's grains relative to the cottonseed meal supplement that we provided. And so this agrees with other fat and low quality forage work that, that's out there and, and suggesting that, you know, using a, a higher fat supplement may be a, a viable method of reducing um, the YM from when we feed cattle these low quality forage diets. So just to, to summarize, um, supplementing low quality forage diets with crude protein increased organic matter and NDF intake that's been shown in the literature a bunch of times. That's not, not anything necessarily groundbreaking. Uh, methane production on, on increased with supplementation and now that is also concomitant with an increase in forage intake as well. But when you, when you express the um, methane production as a percentage of gross energy intake, the YM actually decreased the supplement and further decreased with the high fat supplements. So providing protein supplements regardless of, 
um, fat, high fat or low fat, um, decreased YM, but when we had the higher fat supplements, it further decreased the YM. Now one of the challenges that we're having with this is that distiller's grains, when they came out 20 years ago in the United States, were typically 11 to 12 percent fat, but the corn oil has increasingly been spun off of distiller's grains, and it's very common today on the marketplace for distiller's grains to be in the 6 to 8 percent fat range, as that corn oil has become a source of revenue for the ethanol plants as well. So we're seeing lower uh, fat dried distiller's grains um, available on the marketplace today, which is goes sort of against what, what we showed here in this data set. And, just to summarize it all, overall, you know, supplementing low quality forage diets based on, uh, for beef cattle with protein, positively impact the carbon footprint of, of beef production. 